Well, hello everyone, Cynthia Tomain with Interactive Brokers, and thank you for joining today's webinar where we'll be taking a look at using technical analysis for ETF trading. I'm very pleased to have with us today Peter Ashton, who is Vice President of Client Services at Recognia uh, for today's presentation. So with that, I'm going to ask Peter if you would unmute your phone and I'm going to go ahead and pass the controls over to you. First thing I'm going to ask you to do, Peter, is to bring up uh, your slides for today's event. Thanks for joining us, Peter. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I just think you can see my screen in just one second. There we go. So this webinar is entitled Using Technical Analysis for ETF Trading, and as Cynthia says, my name is Peter Ashton. I'm the Vice President of Retail and Self-Directed Investing at Recognia. And before we start, I wanted to give just a very brief disclaimer just to say that in today's webinar, we're going to talk about a number of real examples of, of stocks and ETFs, and this is all intended to be provided for illustrative purposes only. None of the information contained in this presentation is intended to constitute a recommendation by Recognia to buy, sell, or hold any stock option or securities. So before we begin, a little introduction or a little agenda. I'm going to talk a bit about who Recogni is and what we do, for those of you who are not aware of us. We'll talk a little bit about our approach to technical analysis, which is a little bit different than what maybe you are used to in the past. We might call it an event-driven technical analysis approach. We'll talk about the three different types of technical events that we detect in our software, that being the short-term patterns, indicators and oscillators and classic patterns, and we'll provide a few examples of each kind. And we'll talk about how you can find some daily trade ideas using Recognia, and specifically we'll talk about a new ETF trade newsletter provided by Recognia and BlackRock to interactive brokers. And last, we'll have an interactive Q&A session, so if you can save your questions till the end of the webinar, that'd be great. So beginning uh, a little bit about who is Recognia. Recognia as a company has been in business since uh, the year 2000. We provide technical, fundamental, and quantitative research. And since 2015, we've been part of the Trading Central Group. We have major offices in London, Paris, New York, Hong Kong, and Ottawa. And we provide global coverage of stocks, ETFs, indices, options, foreign exchange, and futures. And our services are provisioned to about 20 million active traders and investors worldwide today. And this, this webinar is really about technical analysis. I'm going to kind of start at the most basic level. We'll talk a little bit about some of the basics of technical analysis. And I know many of you may already be using technical analysis in your trading, and some of this may be a little bit of review, but I promise we will get into some more advanced concepts as we go along. But at its core, technical analysis really is all about looking for patterns and relationships in the price and volume history of securities that can tell us something about the attitudes of buyers and sellers. So for every trade that takes place for a stock or an ETF in the market, that trade represents an agreement between a buyer and a seller for what is the fair price of that security at that moment in time. And that fair price reflects everything that's publicly known about that stock or ETF, including the news, the fundamentals, the general market sentiment about that sector of the market or that particular ETF or stock at that moment in time. So by following the changing prices in the market, it tells us something about the shifting balance of supply and demand. When prices fall, it tells us that um, supply is much greater than demand. And when prices rise, it tells us that the demand is greater than the supply. And we can use this information to help us in making better investing and trading decisions. Now, many people are surprised to learn that technical analysis is not a new discipline. In fact, it dates back over 400 years to the rice markets of Japan. And in fact, many of the names of events that we use in technical analysis today, names like doji, well, these actually come from Japanese. But modern technical analysis, like we practice, really dates back to Charles Dow. And this is the same Dow we know from the Dow Jones Industrial Average. It's also the, he was the very first editor of the Wall Street Journal. But Charles Dow basically observed the stock markets back in the late 1800s, and he believed that things tended to move in cycles. And Dow identified three different market cycles that we should be aware of. He identified what he's called the primary trend, which is the trend lasting anywhere from nine months to two years. That's the blue line on this chart. And superimposed on top of the primary trend, we have the intermediate term trend, which lasts anywhere from six weeks to nine months. And further superimposed, we have the short term trend, which lasts anywhere from two to six weeks. And what's important is that in some places, like for example, over here on the left hand side of the chart, we have all three trends moving in the same direction upward. 
Whereas other places, for example, right over here, we have the primary trend heading down, but the intermediate and short-term trends heading up. So Dow believed that we had to fully understand where we were in each one of these trends to make the right sort of trading decisions. If anybody comes away from this presentation with a desire to learn more about technical analysis, then I, I very highly recommend this book for you. It's called Technical Analysis of Stock Trends. It's by Edwards and McGee. This book actually came out in the 1950s and is in its ninth edition at this point. Um, it's probably as close as there is to a Bible of technical analysis. And there's a great quote from this book that I wanted to use to reinforce you know, why technicians study the price. And Edwards and McGee said that the market price reflects the hopes and fears and guesses and moods, both rational and irrational, of hundreds of potential buyers and sellers. Price is the only figure that counts. So again, this goes to the belief of technicians that by studying the shifting balance of prices, it tells us, it, you know, it also factors in all the other information that's publicly known about the stock or ETF, including the fundamentals, including the news, including market sentiment, and so on. So by studying the price, we actually study many, many different things. Okay, so let's take a look at an example. So here is a stock price chart. This is a real stock. This is Micron. And that's kind of an interesting price history. You see it had a big run up in, in uh, late 2013, early 2014 from $12 up to about $36. It fell very rapidly right back down to that $10 to $12 range and then rallied again back up to about $32 in July of this year. Well, how could we have used technical analysis to help us make better investing and trading decisions? Well, a technician looking at this chart would say, hmm, I actually see an interesting pattern here. This is a pattern called the head and shoulders bottom. This is a bullish reversal pattern, which tells a technical trader that the price is likely to reverse the previous trend. In this case, the previous trend was a downtrend. The stock has been moving downward within this tight channel we've indicated by the gray trend lines. And in the head and shoulders bottom, the stock basically had three successive declines and rallies and breaking through this horizontal red line called the neckline on the third attempt. So we bounced off once, twice, and then rallied through on the third attempt. So that neckline represents a level of resistance to the price of the stock. That neckline basically suppressed the price twice before. Where we broke through it on the third attempt, that indicates that a new bullish trend is now in place. We would expect the price of the stock to rally following the confirmation of a head and shoulders bottom. And in fact, in this case, that's what did happen. The price actually rallied from about 18 to about 32 over the next uh, six months or so. Now let's talk a little bit about Recognia's event-driven approach to technical analysis. And to do that, let's start with the traditional approach and we'll look at how it's different. So traditionally, technical analysis is really about looking at charts. So we're gonna look at many, many charts. So here's a chart for Apple, for example. And this is a chart that goes right until late July of 2017. And kind of interesting chart. So obviously the trend is generally up the lowest low is much lower than the highest high here, so the trend is higher. Um, we had a big decline here in early June, but overall the price has been pretty steady up. Let's take a look at what kind of technical studies might help us in looking at uh, the price of Apple. So let's start with maybe a, a simple moving average. Here's the 21-day simple moving average. Well, price of Apple is above the 21-day simple moving average, so that's certainly a, a bullish sign in the short term. Maybe we want to look at things like the Bollinger Band. So here's the, the 22 Bollinger Band. And you can see that Apple's actually hugging the upper Bollinger Band in this case. And in fact, that upper Bollinger Band has represented a pretty good level of resistance to the price of the stock over the last few weeks here. So this would kind of indicate that the price may actually fall. We may actually bounce off that Bollinger Band because we've not been able to break through it over the last number of trading days. That's kind of a bearish signal. What else can we look at? Let's look at maybe a, a signal like MACD. Well, MACD right now, um, the MACD crossed the signal line back here on July 10th. That's bullish, but we're kind of hovering around zero. So it's not, it's not a super, super bullish kind of signal, kind of hard to take much away from that. And we look at the RSI. RSI is trading at 66.56. Normally a bullish signal occurs when uh, we cross upwards through 30 and a bearish signal occurs when we cross downwards through 70. So neither one of those has happened recently, so it can't take much away from the RSI. So unfortunately, there's not a lot that would really convince us to do something with Apple today based on what I just walked you through. So we move on to the next stock on our list. And my watch list might consist of all of these stocks and ETFs. So this is about 30 stocks and ETFs. And you can see bringing up all of these on a price chart and overlaying all these studies is gonna take some significant time. So, it would be a very time-consuming process for me to individually analyze 
each one of these stocks. However, Recogni provides a little bit of a different approach. We do what's called an event-driven approach. So rather than having you analyze stocks and ETFs one by one by one, we're basically going to do that heavy lifting for you. And we're going to analyze all the stocks in the market, and including ETFs, do that every day. We're going to look for about 65 different kinds of technical events. And we, look, we group these events into three major types. We have what are called the short-term patterns. These are patterns based on the shape and relationships of candlesticks or price bars. So there's about 20 different kinds of short-term patterns that we will automatically detect for you. And for those of you who are maybe newer to technical trading, let's go through a couple of examples here of short-term patterns. So one of the best known short-term patterns is called the hammer. And here's an example of a hammer. And you can see why we call it a hammer because it's this candlestick right here. And you can see it sort of looks like a hammer. It's got a hammer head on top and it's got a long handle coming down. And the hammer is known as a bullish reversal pattern. It tells us the previous trend is likely to reverse. And in fact, in this particular case, you can see there's, this is a real stock by the way, Symantec. Price has been declining since about the 12th of June and it declined right up until this particular hammer when the price actually went on to rally. So why is the hammer a bullish reversal pattern? Well, it is because of what it tells us about the sentiment of traders on the day that it occurs. So let's think about what traders are thinking on the day that this hammer pattern occurs. So the price has been declining for a number of days. So probably traders are starting the day kind of bearish about Symantec. And in fact, almost immediately the price moves lower. So the price is moving lower throughout the trading day and moves all the way down to here before something happens to cause the price to reverse and move higher. And in fact, in this case, it closes up right back up near the highs of the day. So that's what forms a hammer. We have this intraday reversal starting and closing the day near the highs. That tells us that something has changed in the sentiment of traders about this stock. They started the day very bearish, but something reversed over the course of the day and they finished the day much, much more bullish. And that can often be indicative of a stock that's actually poised to rally. And in fact, in this particular case, that's exactly what happened. Now, of course, the challenge is when you're trading on these technical patterns, you don't get the benefit of seeing what happens next, like I had on my chart. So how do you trade something like the hammer? Well, there's two suggestions I have for you. So one is if you're maybe a little bit more conservative, what you might want to do is you're going to say, okay, there's a hammer pattern that's occurred. And maybe I'm going to watch the stock for a couple of days after the occurrence of the hammer. Let's make sure that that reversal does take place. Let's make sure the stock is trading higher over the next couple of days. And then I can actually go and buy the stock and get into my position. Now, you don't want to wait too long, though, because these short-term patterns, as the name suggests, they have influence over a short period of time. So typically, candlestick patterns have influence over 10, maybe 20 candlesticks. So you don't want to wait too long before entering a position based on a short-term pattern. Now, for those of you that are perhaps more aggressive, what you might choose to do is to buy right at the opening on the day following a hammer, uh, being ready for that uptrend that you believe is going to occur. But if you do that, you want to make sure you're going to have a stop loss order, which is in place a little bit below the price you enter at, such that um, in the event that the price happens to move in the opposite direction, that you're actually going to protect your capital in that instance. Now I'll go through a few other kinds of short-term patterns, and we'll go fairly quickly, but I want to just give you a suggestion of some other kinds of things you can look for in terms of short-term patterns. So we have something called the hanging man, very, very similar to, uh, uh, very similar to a hammer. In fact, it looks like a very similar pattern. We call it the hanging man because it sort of looks like a man's head and his legs hanging down, and the implication of hanging man is very negative. It's very bearish. Um, the hanging man is a bearish reversal pattern, so it tells us the previous bullish uptrend is likely to reverse. And what we look for in the case of a hanging man is a very small real body and a very long lower shadow. And here I've shown the real body in, in black, but it could certainly be either black or white. We really want to see, for the case of a hanging man, a shadow which is at least twice the length of the real body. So here you see the shadow where the wick is very, very small compared to the real body, which is very big. This is not a good example of a hanging man. And here's two examples. Um, these are both hanging men, A and B. And I often ask people which one is the better example or the more significant example of a hanging man. And the answer is B because it has a much lower shadow or, or wick. So this indicates that the reversal in sentiment in the case of example B is much greater than that in A. 
And similarly, if I said which one of these is more significant, now one has a black real body and one has a white real body, well, it's still B that's more significant because it doesn't matter what color the real body is. What's really more significant is very small real body and very long lower shadow. And that's what B actually has in this case. Now, another bearish pattern, which you may want to be aware of, is something called the bearish engulfing pattern. So the bearish engulfing pattern is formed when we have a white candlestick which is then followed by a black candlestick which completely engulfs the real body of the preceding candle. So it looks like this. You've got white candlestick and the real body is completely engulfed by the, the subsequent black candlestick. This indicates a bearish pattern. Now it's important that we completely engulf the white candlestick. There's also a bullish counterpart called the bullish engulfing pattern. And as you might suggest, the bullish engulfing pattern is the exact opposite. We have a black candlestick, which is followed by a white candlestick, which completely engulfs the real body of the preceding candlestick. This is a bullish engulfing pattern. Now, these engulfing patterns are usually most effective when they come at the end of a long trend. So a bullish engulfing pattern is going to be more effective when it comes at the end of a bearish trend, like in this example here. Similarly, a bearish engulfing pattern is going to be more significant when it follows a sharp rally, as I've given you in this example. Now, here's kind of a, which one do you prefer, A or B? So on the left, we have an engulfing pattern, white candlestick followed by black candlestick, in fact, right over here. And we have another engulfing pattern on the right, white candlestick followed by black. Which one is the more significant? Which one do we like better? Well, we like the one on the right better because the engulfing pattern here engulfs not just the real body, but the wicks as well. So it's more significant from the perspective of technical analysis. So there's a few examples of short-term patterns and there's many, many others, but we don't really have time in this webinar to get into all of them. But I would like to move on to the next class of technical events. These are called the indicators and oscillators. And many of you, when you think about technical analysis, what you're probably thinking about is indicators and all oscillators. And these are probably the best known because every charting program basically gives you all different kinds of indicators and oscillators to overlay on your charts. And these are probably the best known really because they're the most easy to calculate. Short-term patterns and classic patterns are kind of hard to calculate for computers, but indicators and oscillators are very mathematical in their origins and therefore very easy for computers to calculate. Now there's really three different kinds of indicators and oscillators. There are what are called trend following. So trend following indicators, for example. So these are basically used to smooth the price so trends can be more easily seen as lines. They remove a lot of the noise in the price so we can see the trends more easily. So things like moving averages are a good example of trend following indicators. We have things that are called momentum. So there are momentum oscillators that measure the speed or direction of, of price changes. And then there are what are called stochastics that measure the position of the closing price relative to the recent highs and lows. These are the three major classes of indicators and oscillators. Let's look at just one very simple example. And there's lots of things we could do here. Let's talk about moving averages. And I chose this as my example because moving averages are just so well known to technical traders. And in fact, there's many, many kinds of moving averages out there. So our example, we'll talk about the simple moving average, which is just defined as the average price over the last N days. But we also have other kinds of moving averages like exponential moving averages, weighted moving averages, and so on. And, and no one is any better than the other. They're all just different ways of, of looking at the price history. And moving averages in general tend to work better in trending markets. So as I said, they help us to see the trends as lines on our price chart. And they really can help you identify a trend that's underway. And one of the principles of technical analysis is that a trend will continue until it doesn't anymore. So trends that are in progress will often tend to continue. Now, many people ask me when I give these seminars and webinars in person, they say, like, where do these time horizons in simple moving averages come from? Why do we use the 21 day simple moving average? Why do we use the 50 day? Why do we use the 200 day? Well, these are all just historical and they're relative. So as an example, the 200 day simple moving average is very common and it was originally used in the silver market because Kodak used to be the biggest buyer of silver in the world and Kodak used to keep a 200 day supply of silver on hand. That's why the 200 day simple moving average. In the commodities market for soybeans, we used to use the four month moving average because four months is the shelf life of margarine. So all these time frames are just very relative. Now here's an example of how you might use a simple moving average. 
And I've got two different SMAs here drawn on a real price chart. This is a chart for Hewlett Packard. Um, so in red, we have the 200 day simple moving average. And by the way, to calculate the moving average, all you have to do is take the closing price over the last N days and then divide it by the number of days, and that gives you today's value for the, the simple moving average. So in red, the 200 day, and in red and blue, we have the 50 day simple moving average. Let's talk about how we might use those two uh, SMAs in our trading. So it's interesting that the red simple moving average, if you look at it, the first thing you notice is it actually pro provides a very nice level of dynamic resistance to the price of the stock. Look how many times the price actually approached or touched that line without managing to break through. That's kind of interesting. So if we were to actually extend the price history beyond the right hand side of what is shown here, and if the price of Hewlett Packard was to approach that line again, we might expect it to bounce off as it has in the past rather than breaking through. On the other hand, if it actually did break through the 200 day simple moving average, well, price crossing the simple moving average is actually a very bullish signal. So that would be considered to be a bullish signal for the price of Hewlett Packard. Now we could use the 50 day SMA in a little bit of a different way. If I was to actually plot on here where the price crosses the moving average in the upward direction with a green arrow and where we cross in the downward direction with a red arrow, we could actually use that as a very simple trading system. So you can see we would have actually bought here where the green arrow is and benefited from this uptrend. And we can sell or sell short even better when we have this red arrow. So we'd sell short here and profit from this decline, buy here, sell short here and so on. So you actually probably would have made money even with this very simple trading system based on just a single indicator. And last, I'd like to talk about the classic patterns. And these are uh, perhaps a little bit lesser known types of technical events, but very, very useful to you as traders. And in fact, I, I've saved this for last because I think in many ways, the classic patterns are the most actionable type of events. They're the most actionable because as we'll see, they tell us not just what has happened and what the implication is, but something a bit more concrete in terms of what may happen next. So here's an example of a classic pattern, something called a symmetrical continuation triangle. Triangles are one type of classic pattern. And um, you can see this particular stock has been in an uptrend for a number of months. You can see the uptrend is marked by this very tight channel we've had. And in fact, there is a big gap here as the price moved higher. But the triangle pattern here is formed where the price of this stock actually consolidates over a number of months. So for about one and a half months, the price is consolidating, kind of moving sideways. And in fact, it oscillates between an upper level of resistance, this line here, and a lower level of support, bouncing off between support and resistance for about one and a half months. Now, because in the case of a triangle, support and resistance are converging, well, eventually the price is going to have to either break out above the upper level of resistance or below the lower level of support. Now, in this case, it broke out above the upper level of resistance. That makes this a bullish pattern. And the name suggests a symmetrical continuation triangle. This pattern suggests a continuation of the prior trend. The prior trend here is clearly bullish. So this trend, this pattern suggests that that bullish pattern, that bullish um, trend is going to continue. And in fact, that is what actually happened. And the price moved from about 1750 to $23 over the next one month after the occurrence of this particular pattern. Now, what's very important is this idea of confirmation. So people will often look at a price chart and say, oh, I can see a head and shoulders bottom forming here. I can see a triangle forming. Um, these are not valid patterns from the perspective of technical analysis until they are confirmed. And by confirmation, I mean it actually has to break out above that upper level of resistance or lower level of support. So Recognia will be tracking hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of classic patterns that are currently forming. Only once they are confirmed do they become tradable events um, for our users. Now, the reason I said that I think classic patterns perhaps are the most actionable is because they tell us something about what may happen next. So what technicians have learned to do is they actually can derive what they call the expected move or the target price. And the way that's done is by actually measuring the height of the pattern. So we're going to measure basically the height of the pattern here at the widest part of the triangle. That's this purple arrow. We're going to add that amount of price to the confirmation price right here. And that gives us what's called the expected move. This is where the pattern suggests the price is going to go. So it's kind of a rule of thumb, but it's useful because it tells you, you know, roughly how much 
price action am I going to see? So we think the target price will be somewhere up around $20. We can also derive what is called the trading horizon. How long do we think it will take to reach the target price? The way we do that is by measuring the pattern duration. From where the pattern started to where it's confirmed, we measure that and add that amount of time to the confirmation date and that gives us a guideline for how long we think it's going to take to reach the target price. So in this case, we thought the price would make it to about $20 by you know, right here, about middle of June it looks like. And in fact, we made it past that in this particular example. So this pattern actually worked out really, really well. I'm going to go through a few other examples of classic patterns. And in these examples, I'm going to talk about the bullish pattern. But for each one of these, there's a... Um, uh, a counterparty, basically a, a, a bearish pattern. So the triple bottom, for example, is the bullish pattern, and the triple top would be the bearish pattern. So triple bottoms are actually quite rare events, and they're basically very similar to the head and shoulders that I showed you earlier, but in this case, all three dips are about the same level. So we have one, two, three rallies and declines before breaking through on the third attempt. And the difference between this and the head and shoulders is that in the head and shoulders, we have a head in the middle, which is much lower than the two shoulders. In this case, all three declines are at around the same level. Um, when we confirm the price, basically we can say that this dark green region here, where my, my, my mouse is showing you right here, this is the target price. So in this case, we suggested the price would rally to around 150. And in fact, that did actually happen in this case. The price did make it uh, to there. Another similar pattern to the triple bottom is the double bottom. In this case, we have two rallies and declines before breaking through the neckline on the second attempt. And I had somebody ask me recently in one of my webinars whether it was true that all triple bottoms were also double bottoms. And in fact, that is not true. Those are two completely separate kinds of events, and triple bottoms are not also double bottoms because for this pattern to be a double bottom, remember we have to break out above this neckline. It's not a double bottom until that neckline is broken. And once we've actually broken that neckline, it can no longer be a triple bottom. So triple bottoms and double bottoms are two completely separate types of events. A very common type of classic pattern is the triangle. And we looked at one example of a triangle already. There's lots and lots of triangles that occur in technical analysis. And the reason is because there's about six different kinds of triangles. We have top triangles and bottom triangles, which are reversal patterns. And then we have a few different kinds of continuation patterns as well. And the triangle is an you know, interesting case because we have this situation where the price oscillates between support and resistance until it breaks out either above or below. And the triangle can be very indicative of future price movements in either one direction or the other. Another pattern you may be familiar with is called the upside breakout. This is also sometimes called the rectangle chart pattern. And again, we have a situation where the price sort of consolidates and moves for a number of days or weeks or months between an upper level of resistance and a lower level of support. We basically seesaw back and forth at least two times, but maybe more than that, before breaking out either above or below um, and then signaling the start of a new trend. In this case, we broke out above. This is a new bullish trend. And you can see we actually did achieve the target price in about half of the horizon that we had suggested. Megaphones are very rare events. They don't happen very often, but they're kind of interesting because what they suggest about the market. So you can see that the megaphone is similar to the triangle, except that those support and resistance lines, instead of being converging, are actually diverging. So the megaphone basically tells us that the attitudes of buyers and sellers are actually getting further and further apart. There's greater and greater divergence in the market um, in terms of the attitudes of buyers and sellers. So this is kind of a sign of a market that's out of control. Eventually, though, either buyers or sellers will have to get control of this market, and we're going to either break out above that upper level of resistance or below the lower level of support. And that'll be the, the confirmation of a megaphone top or megaphone bottom. Diamonds are also fairly common types of events because there's many kinds of diamonds, just like there's many kinds of triangles. And you kind of think about a diamond like sort of a megaphone pattern where we have a, a broadening of divergence between the opinions of buyers and sellers. But then something happens to change that and actually opinions get closer and closer together until eventually the price breaks either upward or below the diamond, signaling the start of a new trend. And the last one I'll talk about is the rounded bottom. And of course, the bearish counterpart is the rounded top. Um, these are, again, fairly rare events. And unlike a lot of the other patterns, which sort of suggest a very rapid change in the attitudes of buyers and sellers in the market, 
the rounded bottom suggests a very slow and gradual turning of sentiment in a particular stock or ETF. So in this case, rather than having a, you know, a seesawing back and forth, we have a very gradual change from bearishness to bullishness. And in this case, the pattern is confirmed when the price crosses its moving average. Um, many of you may have actually heard about a pattern called the cup and handle. Well, cup and handle is just a very special case of the rounded bottom. The rounded bottom is a more general case. And of course, we have a bearish counterpart of the rounded bottom called the rounded top. So there are many, many different kinds of technical events in the marketplace. And of course, the benefit that Recogni brings is that we automatically detect over 65 different kinds of technical events every single day. And we cover not just a handful of instruments, we cover every single stock and ETF in the marketplace. And we make that analysis available either on a subscription basis on Trader Workstation. You can actually subscribe to Recognia and get our analysis uh, as part of the screener or, or as part of your news feed every day. We also have something we launched fairly recently called the Recognia ETF newsletter. And this is actually offered in conjunction with BlackRock. And the idea of the ETF newsletter is to flag to you some interesting ETF trading ideas for the day based on our technical analysis. So every day in the ETF newsletter, we provide three bullish ideas and three bearish ideas. And this covers the universe of US traded ETFs. And uh, in the newsletter, you basically get a little bit of uh, information about each one of these ideas. So in this particular case, we had the iShares Russell 2000 ETF was one of our ideas for the day. And we picked this because the price had crossed the moving average. So you can see the, um, the price chart here is a thumbnail. I'll give you a little bit of a commentary to describe what's actually happened. Now, if you want to click more details, what that does is takes you to what we call a hosted article page. So this is basically more information about that particular idea. Um, so here's an idea on the Global X Uranium ETF, and it had formed a pattern called the bearish head and shoulders top. So here's a bit of a description of what's actually happened. So we detected a head and shoulders top. Um, here's the price we confirmed the event at, and here's the target price, 1090 to 1170. Here's a bit of information from an educational perspective about the head and shoulders top to tell you a little bit about it if you're perhaps a little bit newer to technical trading. And we also have a larger version of the price chart. Here we can actually show you that head and shoulders top that has occurred on that particular ETF. So this newsletter is sent out five days a week, Monday to Friday, it's sent out after the close of the markets. So we do our analysis in the evening after the market closes. And um, there's a number of ways of subscribing to our ETF newsletter. Uh, many of you will have received in the past an FYI notification as part of Trader Workstation. You may want to go in there and take a look and see if you can find your FYI notification about the availability of the Recogni ETF newsletter. And this provides a, a link where you can actually click to sign up for the newsletter. I believe there'll be another FYI notification sent out very shortly following this webinar. And of course, if you're more interested in getting this starting immediately, the other way you can do it is to uh, use the direct sign up link. So you can go to the, the hosted page to actually log in. All you have to do is basically give your email address here and submit it. You'll be added to the ETF newsletter distribution list. And incidentally, you can unsubscribe at any time. So at the bottom of every newsletter, there's an unsubscribe link. So if you decide you don't want to receive it anymore, you can easily unsubscribe. So no reason not to, uh, to give it a try. Um, anybody who wants to uh, write down this shortened URL right here, you can use this to go ahead and subscribe to the ETF newsletter right now. So it's Google slash HZ capital M capital Y small x capital J. And I'll give you a second to write that down. But if you type that into your browser, remembering that it's HTTPS, um, you will actually be directed to a sign up page that looks something like this. Enter your email address and click submit and you will receive your first ETF newsletter starting tonight. And I wanted to mention that this is a sponsored newsletter from BlackRock, so BlackRock pays part of the cost of the newsletter, um, but it doesn't cover just BlackRock ETFs. It in fact covers um, all ETFs traded in the US with the exception of leveraged and inverse ETFs, which are not part of the universe, but all manufacturers uh, ETFs are actually included. So. Um, it's, a, it's a very, very wide universe of ideas that are considered, and we pick a number of ideas each day which have had interesting technical events for the day, someplace for you to start your research and perhaps find an interesting ETF trade idea which you may not have been able to find on your own. So that is basically the end of, uh, of the presentation that I had. So what I'd like to do at this point is we're going to go and start the interactive uh, question and answer session. So we can go and start the... Um, Take a look at the questions. 
And uh, Cynthia, did you did you want to run the question and answer session, or would you like me to do that? Uh, well, actually, what I'm going to ask everyone is to utilize the questions panel. That way, we're actually able to record all of your questions as well. Um, now, notice in the control panel, there is a questions title bar. Simply double click on there, and you can open up the uh, Q&A panel and enter any of the questions that you might have. Now, Peter, you can see those questions as well. And we see that um, Omar has um, entered a question. And I'm not exactly sure which chart he was looking at, but he mentioned um, that it looks like a cup and handle. But his other question is um, as well, do you have a success rate for uh, those ideas newsletter? So thank you for your questions, Omar. So I think I answered the cup and handle one already. So you know, the, the, the rounded bottom pattern really is a, a, a more general case of the cup and handle. In fact, if I go back to that particular one. Um, here oh, it, it looks right. like you, you caught that as well. Omar just came back and said, you did answer the question. So yeah. um, <laughs> excellent so, there. So the cup and handle would be uh, you know, very similar to this. You'd have this rounded bottom. Then it's followed by either a little V-shape or another, another little rounded bottom. Either one of those would constitute a cup and handle. Um, real cup and handle patterns are exceedingly rare. So the rounded bottom itself is a fairly rare pattern, and the cup and handle, of course, being a subset of that is even more rare. So we tend to focus on the rounded bottom just because it tends to occur a bit more frequently. But certainly nothing stops you from you know, seeing the confirmation of a rounded bottom and then looking for that little V-shape or, or other rounded bottom following it to trigger the confirmation of a uh, cup and handle. The other part of your question, Omar, was around uh, success rate of these patterns. So we, what we really think of ourselves as doing at Recognia is not providing high conviction trade ideas, but rather helping you to automate the process of technical analysis. Many people will use our ideas in different ways, and as a result, different people will achieve different levels of success. Um, so really think of these kind of as an automated way of, get, of uh, you know, scanning the market and looking for what are interesting technical events. None of these are provided, to, assuming you're going to trade all of them, rather they're provided as the starting point of your research and you can do further research on top of these and then think about which ones you actually want to follow through and, and take positions in. So if there's any other questions, please, uh, please Feel free to ask them. Maybe I will answer one question that comes up frequently just while we're waiting for uh, some other questions to come in. Um, you know, one of the questions would be, um, you know, in some cases, we will actually see a target price as part of the, the, um, as part of the uh, article page or as part of uh, this newsletter page. So for example, this one here, Global X Uranium ETF, it says right here, this bearish signal indicates the stock price may fall from the close of 1514 to the range of 1090 to 1170. So not always do you get that target price as part of the idea. So people often ask, why is it I'm getting the target price sometimes and not other times? Well, there's a good reason for it. It's because, remember we talked about one of the benefits of classic patterns is they can give us that target price. So only technical events that are classic patterns will have a target price associated with them. We try to favor the classic patterns as part of the picking of ideas we have in our newsletter, but some days there just aren't any interesting classic patterns. Um, so in this case, for example, these three events that I showed you here, these are all indicator events. But uh, So these indicator events would not have target prices, but when we have events that have our classic patterns, we will give you the target price as well. Let's just see here. Uh, so it says, I know ETFs are a basket of many stocks. What I want to know is the ETF movement, is it independent of the stocks they represent? So um, that's a great question. And in fact, um, you know, an ETF is formed by an aggregation of many, many stocks of a certain type into an ETF. And does the trading price of that ETF actually reflect all the underlying? Well, you know, at its most basic level, it doesn't have to because the ETF trades as a separate instrument to all those things underneath. It is theoretically possible that all the underlying instruments are being traded down, whereas for whatever reason, traders like that ETF and are actually trading it up. Now, the reason that doesn't happen in practice is because there are people out there that practice what is called arbitrage, and they will look for those opportunities. Basically, when you have an ETF which is trading even a tiny, tiny amount out of alignment from the underlying basket that it tracks, then those arbitrage people will come in and they will you know, basically cause that to be aligned by either 
uh, selling the ETF or buying it to bring it into alignment. So in general, the ETF is going to track very, very closely the underlying instruments that it's based upon. Uh, and the tiny amount of difference that you'll see there is called the tracking error, which is often published. The tracking error is usually very, very small in the case of most um, highly traded ETFs. Um, so here's a question from Amador. It says, besides the newsletter, do you have any other products that can be used for analysis and trading ideas? And what are the prices of the subscription? So in fact, on in Interactive Brokers, on Trader Workstation, we have another technical analysis product called Technical Insight, which is available to you. It is a subscription product available as part of what's called the Research Data Bundle. Um, and if you subscribe to the Research Data Bundle, you'll get Recogni's analysis. And you can use that in a couple of different ways. It can be set up as a news feed. Um, so you basically can uh, see our events as news feeds, for example, and filter by instrument or what have you. So you can see all the day's events in that manner. Or you can use it as screening criteria as part of the Mosaic screener. So you can basically say, I'm on a screen for stocks that have a certain market cap and a certain price to earnings ratio. Oh, and by the way, I also want them to have had a recent classic pattern or have had a recent hammer or a recent shooting star, whatever technical event it is you want to use. So that is possible if you're a subscriber to the research data bundle, which contains the Recognia technical data as part of it. The ETF newsletter we're talking about in today's webinar, that is a free product. It's free to everybody. Um, you don't have to pay for it. In fact, it's sponsored by Interactive Brokers and by BlackRock. So it's certainly something that I think all of you may want to, uh, to check out. And if you like the analysis in the ETF newsletter, then you may also want to think about subscribing to Recogni as part of the research data bundle. Let's see what else do we have here. Uh, just looking for other questions. Give me one second here. Um, will this session be available for later viewing? I think Cynthia can answer that question, but I believe the answer is yes. Yes, and Peter, um, what I'm going to do, I was waiting for a moment here where I could jump in, and I'm, I'm actually going to grab the controls back from you so that we can see how to access this information on the Trader Workstation platform. Um, so let me come back in. I'm going to grab controls for today's session. Um, and let me see here, we should, I should have those now. Uh, okay, so now I, let's see, now I will have them and let's go in and I'm going to do a screen share here. So everyone should see my version of TWS now open. Now as Peter mentioned that these products are available and I'll show you in just a moment where our pricing tools are, but since I do have the Trader Workstation open up, I did want to point out we are in Mosaic and by the way, this is also available in the classic version of TWS. So either interface that you're working on, you can still utilize these tools. Now notice in the monitor window, if you go up to the plus tab, you'll be able to access the Mosaic Market Scanner feature. Now we do have um, the Recognia tools have, uh, or the indicators are available as a pre uh, formatted or predefined scan and notice if you scroll to the very bottom by selecting US options you can actually open up the strong bullish indicators or the strong bearish indicators now either one that you open up notice as soon as you do come in you'll see exactly how this uh, scanner has been created and the different criteria but notice that you also have the ability to customize these by simply clicking that customize button <clears throat> Excuse me here. What I did want to point out is that notice there are several fields that have been predefined, but if you go to that add field section, for those of you um, who do subscribe to Recognia, notice that you'll also see technical indicators that are available. And simply expanding that plus sign will show you the different indicators, uh, the event score, the event class, even the event name as they do appear. Uh, so you can add any of these to that market scale and then run that market scanner on demand or whenever you're looking for some additional ideas. By the way, I will put a plug in. We're going to be going over the market scanner feature coming up uh, later on this month. Uh, let me take a double 
check here uh, where we will be going through the market scanners on September 21st. So if you're interested in seeing more about this particular feature, then do definitely join us. Now also on here, what I am going to do is pull up the Interactive Broker website and show you as well if you're looking for any pricing information. Notice, well first of all, let me grab this and I'll put this over on the screen so that you can see the information. Notice that under the pricing menu is where you can find research news and market data. So if you're looking for the information, um, <clears throat> notice here, we'll simply go into research news and then you'll find those bundle services that are available. Here is where you can find Recognia and the various prices um, for subscribing to, those, uh, to that service. So notice it is available here whether you're a non-professional or a professional uh, on the interactive broker platform. So I did want to point that out too uh, where you can find some additional services that are available. Now you'll need to subscribe to this service via account management and that can be done once you log into account management under the manage account section uh, go into trading permissions uh, <clears throat> excuse me, where you will see uh, the research providers that are available. And by the way, if you do want to learn a little bit more about Recognia, simply click that icon that's included in our um, pricing list to where you can view a sample report of what's available and even access the Recognia website. So a quick way that you can find information that Peter has been referring to throughout today's event. Well, Peter, I see a few more questions have come in. So what I'm going to do is uh, bring this back over and I'll pass the uh, controls back over to you if you want to wrap up today's session. Uh, thanks, Peter, for letting me jump in here. It, Not a problem, Cynthia. You, okay. If you can share your desktop once again. And, oh, and by the way, everyone, I also want to point out in the chat panel, I've entered the link. You can actually click that link before we do exit today's session and sign up directly for the ETF Trading Ideas uh, newsletter directly um, using that link that's available. And to address everyone else, by the way, we are recording today's session, and you'll all get a direct link to today's recorded playback, as well as access to the webinar notes. So if you want to come back and review those concepts that Peter's been discussing, simply watch your email later on this afternoon. By the way, all of the links that he's mentioned will be active in the PDF version of the webinar notes that you'll also get a copy of. So now, back to you, Peter. Hey, thank you, Cynthia. That's great. Uh, there's one more question came in while you were speaking. It's from uh, it's from Brett, and basically he's asking, you know, do you have any analysis on the uh, effectiveness of each pattern? For example, head and shoulders wins 60 percent, double bottom wins 40 percent. So, uh, Recogni doesn't put forward any um, any preference for one type of technical event or pattern over another. Um, I know some people perhaps like to trade one pattern more than any other, but our approach really is to help automate the standard practices of technical analysis. So we want to help you to find the technical events. You would read about it in any good book on technical analysis, um, like um, Edwards and McGee, for example. And we don't put forward any preference in terms of which patterns are better. And in fact, it's a very difficult thing to do because um, which patterns perform better really depends on the market conditions. So for example, the double bottom, which is a reversal pattern, is probably going to perform really well when you have a sideways market and you have lots and lots of reversals. On the other hand, something like a symmetrical continuation triangle will perform very well in a trending market where you have a very strong trend in one way or the other. So you know, putting forward any kind of a preference around one pattern or another is kind of very error prone and, and very market dependent, so we tend not to do that. And I don't see any other questions that have come in, Cynthia, so um, I guess that's the end. Um, well, anything else we should say before we wrap it up? Well, I think that is going to conclude our session today. So just a quick reminder, everyone, to watch your email later on today for a direct link to both the recorded playback as well as Peter's webinar notes that are available and those links to sign up for um, 
the ETF Trade Ideas newsletter. Well, I want to thank uh, Peter Ashton with Recognia and also BlackRock for making today's presentation uh, available to each of you. So thanks very much. And by the way, I also want to thank all of you for participating with us here today. Have a great afternoon, everyone, and remember all to please trade smart. By the way, you can exit today's session using the X that appears at the top of your control panel on the right-hand side of your screen. Have a great day, everyone, and please all do remember to trade smart. Have a good one. Thanks.